let's try to do this improper integral. This integral is definitely improper because we have minus infinity and infinity as our lower and upper bounds for this integral. And the way we do this one is as follows. First, let's just recopy it. The idea here is to choose any number you want that's in between minus infinity to infinity. And in fact, any number, any real number at all would work. I think it's most natural to choose zero. So let's break this integral up into two separate integrals. And see what we have. So the strategy for determining whether this improper integral is convergent or not is to break it up like this and then we evaluate each one of these separately and if both of them converge then the original integral converges and the answer would be the sum of these two numbers but if just one of these turns out to be infinity or minus infinity then we can stop and conclude that this original integral is divergent so we're going to evaluate each of these separately and see what we get so let's start with the first one. Minus infinity to zero, x e to the minus x squared dx. Now, of course, this integral in itself is improper. This zero is fine, but this minus infinity down here makes that an improper integral. So let's change the bounds to, uh, let's change the improper integral into a limit. That's always our strategy. And so let's let t, capital T, approach minus infinity. And then the integral will be from t to 0, x e to the minus x squared dx. Now, well, actually, I'll work down here. Let's do a substitution here, OK? Let's let u be equal to minus, minus x squared. So then du would be minus 2x dx. And that means minus 1 half. Why don't we multiply by minus 1 half? So minus 1 half du would be x dx. And notice we can change the bounds as well. Uh, if I evaluate u of 0, I get minus 0 squared, which is 0. And I evaluate u of t, I get minus t squared. So what does this new integral become? The t becomes minus t squared. The 0, well, that stays as 0. Uh, x dx is right here. That's the same as minus 1 half du. e to the minus x squared is going to become e to the u. x dx, like I just said, is minus 1 half du. And uh, that, believe it or not, is much better. So let's bring the minus 1 half to the front. And then we just have the integral of e to the u. Well, that's the most easy integral. The integral of e to the u is e to the u. So we have that. And why don't I just keep going over here? Oh, I made a little mistake. This t is going to minus infinity here. So we have to keep that. And minus 1 half stays here. e to the 0 is 1 minus e to the minus t squared. Now, what happens in this integral? Well, look, uh, just as a basic integral, I hope you know that the limit as x goes to minus infinity of e to the minus x, sorry, e, just e to the x, is what? That's equal to 0, right? e raised to the power of very large negative numbers is a very small number. So the limit as x goes to minus infinity of e to the x is 0. Um, if you, do you remember the graph of e to the x very quickly? The graph of e to the x looks like this, right? So when I take numbers that are very large negative, the y values are very close to 0. Let me just erase that because we don't have a lot of room. Now, the reason I brought that up is just to remind you that e raised to the power of very large numbers is a very small number. So what's going on here? t is a very large negative number, right? 
When I square that, I get a very large positive number, but then I'm making it negative again. So in the end, this quantity minus t squared is a very large negative number, and e raised to that is a very small positive number. Essentially, it's zero. So in the limit, this is going to be zero. So this is minus 1 half times 1 minus 0. And that gives me minus 1 half. So when I decompose my integral here, this guy is just fine. This converges to negative 1 half. Now our, our goal is to work on this one. I'm just going to put minus 1 half here to remind ourselves what we get for that. And I'm just going to erase everything else. So that'll give us space to work. Um, so the, really the truth is things are going to be very similar. Um, I'm wondering if I should be lazy a little bit and just erase some stuff. How would these two integrals be different? Well, of course, these would be different. Uh, I really should rewrite everything, but things are going to be so similar that it's kind of not worth it. 0 to infinity of this. What is, what's going to happen? Well, t is now going to be going to plus infinity. So my integral is going to be from 0 to t. So far, so good. My substitution here is going to be exactly the same. I'm going to let u be minus x squared. Um, this changes just a tiny bit. Um, no, actually, no. This this, uh, this does not change at all. So our substitution here is exactly the same. What about on this step? Does anything change? Well, of course, this goes to positive infinity. And these will change though, right? The uh, u of 0 is 0. u of t um, is minus t squared again. And everything else, uh, e to the u is the same. And minus 1 half du is the same. So everything's looking fine there. This goes to, um, sorry, this is uh, infinity, of course. I bring the minus 1 half out front. This changes a little bit. This time, the minus t squared is on top, and the 0 is on bottom. And I'll erase this part and do that part again. So I did save myself a little time there. If you want to be super proper, you should really recopy everything. But we don't want to waste time if we don't have to. So let's evaluate the limit. Limit. Or no, we won't evaluate the limit yet. We're just going to evaluate these square brackets out. We'll evaluate the limit on the next step. So we get e to the minus t squared minus e to the 0, which is 1. What happens here? Well, this is the same kind of discussion we had. t is a very large positive number. When I square it, it's even a much larger positive number. But then I make it negative. So minus t squared is a massive negative number. e to raised to the power of this massive negative number is a very, very small positive number. Essentially, it's 0. So this limit is going to be 0. So the limit, now I can evaluate it. It's minus 1 half times 0 minus 1. And that gives me positive 1 half. So this little integral here converges, and it's 1 half. So what have we determined here? We evaluated this. We got negative 1 half. It converges. We evaluated this one. We got 1 half. So it also converges. Therefore, our conclusion is that both of these converge. And therefore, the answer to my original is this integral converges. And the final result is whatever the sum of these two individual integrals are. And how about I write that down here? Um, so our conclusion is that the integral in the question converges. because each of those separate integrals converge. And let me just separate this a little bit. And what is the value of the integral? Well, the integral from minus infinity to infinity of x e to the minus x squared dx is equal to the value of this first integral, which is negative 1 half, plus the value of the second integral, which is 1 half. And what does that give us? 0. 
So this integral is equal to zero. Uh, I have a feeling I can't remember quite what the graph looks like, but I think it's uh, the graph probably looks uh, something like this. And so this area is a half under underneath this part of the graph. And this is really the same region, except it's underneath the x-axis, so it's minus one half. This is above the x-axis, so it's positive area. This is a negative area. And these are both the same region, except flipped. And therefore, these areas just cancel off. And the value of this improper integral is just zero. And that's our answer. Okay, So the integral converges, and the value of the integral is zero.